What do you do with the money that you're going to need in a few years? How do you invest that money for growth, but still protect it so that it's there when you need it? In this video, I'll explain the risk return trade-off with your near-term money. I'll then reveal three short-term investments you can use to grow and protect your money. We're talking short-term investments today on Let's Talk Money. Beat dead. Make money. Make your money work Creating for you. Creating the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to everyone in the community. Thank you for taking a part of your time to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now, one of the most frequent questions I get here on the channel is, is how to invest money that you're going to need within the next year or two. In fact, the motivation for this video came directly from a conversation I had with someone in the community in the comments. So about a year ago, Paul wrote, my wife and I had saved up $9,000 but need another five or 6,000 to buy a house in a year. How do we invest this to grow it by that amount in the year? Now, Paul was dreaming of those big returns. He needed to grow that $9,000 by 60% for his down payment and was thinking about Bitcoin and other high risk investments. So we talked about a risk return trade-off and how to invest money that you need soon in short-term investments and safe investments. I tried to talk him out of those Bitcoins and some of the other ideas that he was mentioning. Unfortunately, it didn't work out well and I asked him if he could share a story for this video. He ended up putting some of that down payment in Bitcoin and got hit hard when the price tanked. He had some of investments work out and he's looking into some of these side hustle ideas to make up those losses. So I wanted to make a video about this because I know it's a question many of you have from time to time. How do you invest that money that you're going to need in less than five years? The problem is that most investors just don't see it as a different question than, than that's answered by some of our longer term investing videos. They look for those best investments for the 20 or 30 year time frame and assume it's going to be the same for those near term cash needs. I'll walk you through the risk return trade off and why you absolutely need your short term cash invested apart from your long term investing. Uh, we'll talk about the dilemma people face in that short-term investing. Then I'm going to reveal three short-term investments that you can use for both safety and for growth. Now, first though, I want to get your opinion on this. What are the personal finance questions that you want to see answered here on Let's Talk Money? Uh, what money problems do you want covered? Things like buy versus rent and should couples join finances? Scroll down and let me know in the comments below what personal finance questions do you want answered? So the first answer most people get when they ask, how should I invest short term money is just stick it into a savings account. Now that savings account is about as safe and short term as it gets, but that 0.1% average return on their money is just a non starter for most investors. In fact, you're actually losing money by sticking your sticking it in the savings account. You know, inflation, the annual increase in prices is running at about 2% right now. Now that's not bad, but it means sticking your money in these savings at near zero rates loses your money every single year. At that rate over 20 years, your dollar would buy just 66 cents worth of the things that it buys today. That's the threat from inflation. Now savings accounts are federally insured, so you're guaranteed to get your money back in that year or two when you do need it. But what happens when you go the other way? Investing that money in riskier investments like stocks, real estate, or, or even the supposedly safety investment gold. Now stocks provide a solid 9.9% .9 average return, but can lose as much as half of their value in any given year. That 47% loss was in 1931, but, but we saw two crashes that were just as bad in the last two decades. Now one of my favorite investments, real estate produced a 11.4% annual return on that FTSE NARED index over the last 46 years, but plunged 42% in 1974. Even gold, the investment that's supposed to save you from a stock market crash, saw its price plummet in 2013. That's a 30% loss on an asset that's supposed to be a good store of value. Now, I love stocks, bonds, and real estate as long-term wealth builders. Combining these three give you a smoother portfolio gains over decades and lots of return, but in any given year, you just can't bet on them. That's the dilemma that you face with investing money that you're going to need in a year or two. That risk return trade-off means for a higher return, you have to be able to accept more risk to the downside. In a savings account, there's no risk, but there's also no return. In stocks, the return is there, but also the possibility of losing half your money in any given year. No matter how good of an investor you are, how much the analysts and pundits on TV think the next year is going to be a good one for stocks, you just can't risk that short term money. Now I am going to reveal those three safe short term investments that you can use on this money that you're going to need in a year or less. Before that though, there are two ways that you want to think about this money and how you invest it. You want to think about the reason that you need the money and how important it is that you, that you can afford it. Whether it's buying a house, retiring in a few years, or, or whatever that goal is going to be, you want to think about that goal. 
Now I want you to score this on a scale of one to 10. How bad would you feel if you didn't have the money and are there any other good alternatives for the goal? So something like your kid not being able to go to college would be really bad, especially if you've been planning on it for years. Uh, there might be less expensive colleges in the area, but is it really a good alternative? Conversely here, if you're planning on saving up for a hugely expensive vacation and, and you fall short a little, maybe that wouldn't be quite so bad. You could probably still afford a nice getaway, so no big deal on this one. Now this is going to guide you in the types of investments that you need for that money. Uh, if it's absolutely critical that the money be there in a year and there's no good alternatives, you want it in the safest investments possible. If on the other hand, your big money goal is more of a wish than a need, then maybe you can go for that little higher risk and that higher return. For that money you absolutely must protect and you still need it within a year, I'd still go with a savings account, but maybe in an online account instead of that traditional bank. I use the Capital One 360 bank, which pays a rate as high as 2% on some accounts. Now there's no minimum balance on 360 savings or kids accounts and all are federally insured so you'll have that ultimate safety net. Now I'm not including this one in our three short term investment ideas because it's still going to be a savings account but getting that extra 1.9% return on your money is huge and it's going to protect you from inflation. In fact carried out further over 20 years and that simple 2% return grows a $10,000 account to almost 15 grand versus a traditional savings account that just goes nowhere. Now I use the Capital One account for my regular monthly savings, emergency fund and that short-term money that need that we're talking about here. I use the link that I'll leave in the description below and the bank is going to give you a $20 bonus when you open an account. Now our first short-term investment strategy is going to be similar to that holding cash in a savings account but it's going to get you an extra half a percent on the money that you just can't do without. Now, most investing platforms and robo-advisors pay an interest rate on the money sitting in your account, cash uninvested. Uh, what most investors don't know is that these rates are as high as two and a half percent on some platforms. Even better is that some of these websites like Ally Invest and E-Trade is going to pay you a cash bonus depending on how much money you start out with. The bonus on Ally works out to around a half a percent and you get as much as 0.8% on E-Trade. The risk here is that you can't be tempted to invest the money in these risky investments. Uh, we'll look at two more short term safety investments next but, but if this money is absolutely critical and you need it in a year, just keep it in cash and collect that interest each month. Next here is the Vanguard Short Term Bond Fund, ticker BSV. Now this fund holds thousands of bonds which means no single company puts the returns at risk and it pays a steady 2.15% annual dividend. Bonds in the fund have maturities of less than 5 years and 65% of the holdings are in US government bonds with the rest in investment grade companies. So, so this fund is ultra safe and has produced an annual return of 2.8% since its inception. Now since the bonds in this fund are short term they won't be affected much by changing interest rates. You see the biggest risk in bond prices is that when interest rates increase, bond prices decrease. That means even some safe bond funds may see their price drop when, when rates move higher but short term bonds aren't affected as much so you're still pretty safe in this fund. You'll get a higher return for just a little more risk in a longer term bond fund like the Vanguard Long Term Bond ETF, uh, ticker BLV. Now this one pays a 3.5% dividend yield and has produced an annual return of 7.6% over the last decade. Now this one is only slightly more risky and still has 43% of its holdings in government bonds with the rest of it in safe investment grade debt. Uh, the risk here is those longer term bonds are affected by rising interest rates. Now if the Federal Reserve were to change its mind and, and start hiking rates again this fund could take a percent or two hit. I know it sucks to watch your money sit there and only making maybe 2 or 3% a year but, but this is the kind of strategy that you need to use for money that you're going to need within the next few years. Use those questions that we talked about to decide which of these three short term investments you need and protect your money. Click through the video on the right, the six investments the rich use to get richer. Now this is from a survey of more than 2500 millionaires and the results are going to surprise you. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.